Boston Celtics season comes to an end in a way that we probably should have seen coming, or at least I should have seen coming. Some of you did see it coming. It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can't. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team, step back. We gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I'm here for you every day with a free, fresh podcast directly to subscribers' devices, so make sure you are one of those subscribers by opening up your favorite podcasting app, clicking subscribe, and then when I drop the show, it shows up on your device. You could watch the show on YouTube, ring the bell there, get notified when I drop a new video. I'm John Corrales. I used to play, and now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Here at the TD Garden, this is my last post game here at the TD Garden this season because the Boston Celtics lost to the Miami Heat. Just, I don't know. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see a 103-84 loss to the Heat in this game coming. Okay, a loss, fine. A loss like this. Shocking. I thought the Celtics were going to come in and ride the crowd and and hit shots and blow Miami out. I felt confident that they were going to come in here and feel the energy from the crowd, rise up because of it, and build a lead that Miami could not just could just not come back from. This building wanted it. This building wanted it by the way today's show is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account use the code locked on nba for 20 dollars off your first purchase last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed you're not buying tickets to any celtics games right now maybe you decide hey let me go pick up a let me go to the red sox or you can go to a show whatever this building when i say it was hyped this building was rocking early. Paul Pierce comes out 20 minutes, 30 minutes before the before the tip, and he's standing on the court, and he's hyping people up. There are let's go Celtics chants happening all over the place. People are driving to the game, hanging out there, car windows. There, there's just madness all over the city of Boston. Fans here were hyped. If there was ever a game where a team could just feed completely off the energy of a crowd, this was the game. The people here, the fans here were awesome. And you know that they're into it because at the beginning when they sang the national anthem, everybody's singing along. No one sings along with the national anthem in here. They were all singing along. This was like everybody was into it. Everybody loved every moment of this. The Celtics got the opening tip it got bounced around and jalen brown got the opening tip and the crowd exploded they showed a pre-game hype video of the 2004 red sox and they showed david ortiz home run and the crowd goes nuts like they just saw it for the first time they showed the Derek white buzzer beater right up here on the jumbotron and the crowd went nuts like they just saw it happen live they were into it every little thing that the celtics did got huge huge pop and then somewhere in the first quarter i was just like hmm kind of don't like how this is going because they were up seven two they're up nine to four and miami was missing and boston was rebounding and they came down and they just couldn't quite capitalize on some of these opportunities. The Celtics had their chances and couldn't quite capitalize on whatever the 
Miami Heat were giving them. They couldn't do it. And I said, this is this is getting to a point where I don't like it. Miss three pointer, miss three pointer, miss three pointer. The Celtics missed their first 12 three pointers. They shot 21%, nine of 42, two straight games of single digit three pointers for the Celtics. They made seven in game six. They made nine. They shot nine of 42. They took 42 threes and 40 twos. This is the math. The math is there. The, the Joe Missoula math was there for the Celtics. They took 42 three-pointers. If they had just hit the league average, 36%, that would have been 15 three-pointers. And that changes the entire dynamic of this game. But the Celtics couldn't cash in. They were playing decent defense. And then, then... Miami's shots started to fall. And once Miami's shots started to fall, it got it got ugly. Amazingly, they they were only down 11. They got into the half only down 11. And I thought this is still within reach. Somehow the Celtics could pull this out if they just come out of the half and play well. And they they kind of did. They got it down to eight in the third quarter. They just never could. They never could get that next that next play. And then the fourth quarter comes, and I thought, first five minutes, this is if the Celtics are going to turn this thing around, if they're going to make a game of this, if they're, if they're going to steal this win and find a way to shock everybody, First five minutes of this fourth quarter is going to be where they do it. And and they just couldn't put it together. Outscored 16 to 5 to start the fourth quarter. This game, you could say it turned on the first play of the game for Boston where Jason Tatum rolled his ankle. And I saw him walking into and out of the interview room at the end of the night. And he was limping pretty badly. You know, the ankle apparently swelled up pretty badly on him. It limited him. Tatum said, I felt horrible that I was a shell of myself. And that, that right there might have, might have been the game might have, because Tatum really couldn't push off in the third quarter or fourth quarter. He had a dunk. He got by, um, got through the defense and got a dunk and he landed on that left on that left ankle and then he kind of hopped up on it like it was very clearly very painful and you know here here's Tatum all year long basically avoids injury all year long and then ga- the very first play of game seven he turns the ankle and that limits him but the Celtics still had those opportunities it wasn't just hey, Tatum has the bad ankle, and that's the end of the game. The Celtics still had chances. Down 11 at the half, as bad as it felt, down 11 is fine. Down 11 in an NBA game at the half, it's nothing. Down 11, five minutes to go, that's nothing. Celtics down eight in the third quarter. Fourth quarter, they would have had plenty of opportunities. Now, obviously, Jason Tatum couldn't have, you know, couldn't really push off and couldn't do uh, a lot of the things that he's capable of doing. But the Celtics still had other guys. They had other guys that could step up. I'll talk about one of those guys, Jalen Brown, who had eight turnovers. I'll talk about him next. Later on, third segment, why the Celtics could regret this. Now, they came out of this, and basically the end of this game was exit interviews. Everybody came out. Everybody came out to talk for the most part. And it was a little bit more upbeat than I was expecting. Not that it was upbeat, but it wasn't quite quite as somber as the finals loss last year. I'll tell you that much. 
I think the Celtics might regret the missed opportunity. That's coming up later in the third segment. First, let's talk about the game time app. I know there's no more basketball in Boston for people. You probably were planning on doing something next week. You had Celtics tickets and you want to do something else. Well, open up the game time app. Maybe you want to go to a Red Sox game. They're the only game in town now, so go check that out. Uh, or, hey, maybe you want to go to something different. You want to go to a show. You want to go to a comedy show. Any kind of last-second ticket is there on the Game Time app. There are deals right up to the days of the event. Flash deals on tickets for all kinds of events, uh, sports or non-sports. And the Game Time guarantee means you're always going to get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time gives you 110% of the difference that gives you images of your seats. You can see exactly where you're sitting. You know what you're getting. Two taps, boom, there you go. There are your tickets, and they're sent directly to your phone, so you don't have to dig through your email. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On on the Game Time app for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Use that promo code Locked On NBA. Locked On NBA. That's the promo code on the Game Time app. For $20 off last minute tickets, Game Time has the last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. I want to thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. I know there's a lot of, <laughs> I'm probably talking to more Miami Heat fans at this point than I'm talking to Celtics fans. I know for a fact. I've, you know, the, the last three games I've been able to talk my my smack and saying, hey, where are you Miami Heat fans? I know for a fact before I even finish recording this, before this show even exists in the public, I can see the sharks swirling in the water. Here they come, Miami Heat fans coming to flood my mentions and flood the comment section. Well, I got to say this. Joke's on you because all you're doing is pumping up my algorithm. So thank you, Miami Heat fans, for feeding the algorithm. Uh, come talk your smack. Flood the comment section. Keep pumping up the page views. All you're doing is making this the most popular Celtic show on the planet. So thank you for that. Uh, by the way, Denver in four. Uh, I, think, I think Denver is going to just demolish Miami. I think Denver is that good. And the sad thing is, I think that the Celtics have the better matchup uh, against Denver. I thought, I think the Celtics could have beaten Denver if they could have just gotten past Miami. And that's one of the reasons why in the next segment, I'm going to talk about the regret here. But let's talk a little bit about some of these individual performances, the final individual performances uh, of the night, uh, of the season. And you got to start with Jalen Brown, who after the game owned it. He said, you know, he was Jalen was the most visibly upset of the Celtics after the game. He was just uh, you can tell he was it was eating him up inside. He had eight, eight turnovers. Jalen Brown had eight turnovers. Uh, the Miami Heat before garbage time. There was a point where he, they had seven. When it mattered, he had more turnovers than the entire Miami Heat team. He just couldn't couldn't dribble the ball. Just kept handing it, just passing out passing out turnovers like Halloween candy. And on top of it, he shot eight of twenty three, shot one of nine from three. He only got two free throws. Uh, he did have eight rebounds and five assists, but he was a minus seventeen on the night. Only Grant Williams in 16 minutes was worse, but Jalen on a night, and he said, he basically said the same thing. On a night where Jason Tatum was hurt and really had nothing that he could give, nothing more than what he gave, the team needed Jalen Brown to step up, and he couldn't do it, or he didn't do it. And I think this is going to eat at Jalen for a while. I think this is a loss. I mean, as much as the finals was on both guys, this was, I think, 
the situation that he wanted. Jalen Brown, I, 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 mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but this is the type of dream scenario, right? You're playing in a game seven at home. The main guy, the guy, your 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 co-star, but everybody regards him as the best player on the team, goes down with an ankle injury, but he's still gutting through it, but they're going to need you to step up. They're going to need you to step up and be the guy. And he's like, yes, I get to be the guy. And then he comes out and plays that game. Whoo. I tell you what. I feel like as a basketball player, that's a game that just, that lives with you forever, forever. He will never, he can come out next year and be a first team all NBA guy. He can come out next year and be the best player in the league. Jalen Brown can win the MVP next year and the year after and the year after that. And he will always, always, always remember the conference finals game seven, where he had eight turnovers and just plain sucked. That will always live with him. That's how basketball players brains work. He will never, ever forget this performance. Now, if you want to go silver lining and say, that's going to be something that drives them. Sure, you don't want it to be the case where you need to go through that so it can drive you, but if he's going to carry that with him and it can drive him, maybe open his eyes. Maybe it opens his eyes and and, and he has to admit some things about himself. Like, that handle is still way too loose. It's gotten better over time, but, and and look, we don't know. He's dealing with a, a, a wrist injury or something. Maybe there's something in that wrist that is problematic and, and it needs to be corrected. And maybe that's part of it. And we'll look back on it and say, well, okay, some of these turnovers were probably injury based, but when you're out there, you're out there. And if you're playing, you're playing and you're going to get judged on basic on what you do when you're playing. And he just didn't play well. And so maybe there are things that he has to admit to himself after a game like this, we don't know what's going to happen this summer. He's due for an extension. And look, I've got plenty of time now to podcast about future extensions and stuff like that. So I'm not going to get into that now, but it's going to be an interesting summer for him for sure. Um, other performances in this game, not that we really need to get into that much because the season is over. Uh, I thought Derek, Derek, I mean, Derek White got hurt. But Derek White kept them alive. He's the only guy. No, actually, Al Horford hit two. So him and Al were the only guys that hit more than one three-pointer. Jalen was one of nine. Tatum was one of four. Jeez. Smart was one of six. Smart, by the way, after the game said he's got to work more on his outside shot so he can give them somebody that can pat they can pass to and knock down the shots. Like he knows, he knows he's very well aware. I think these guys know what they're facing. Uh, Grant Williams, not good in this game. One of three was a minus 19 in 16 minutes. Malcolm Brogdon. Let me finish this segment on Malcolm Brogdon. He, after the game, said the reports of the tear in the tendon in his arm were correct. Um, and I asked him, are you going to need surgery? He said, that's something I'm considering. So the obvious question for the Celtics is why the hell was he cleared if he had a tear in his now all right you know what I'm going to maybe you say we're going to clear him and in case of an emergency we just want to have that body there fine why did he play why did he play seven minutes and why did he keep playing when he in those seven minutes was a minus 15? He was 0 of three. And let me tell you something about the first shot that he took that air, the air ball from three.
Now I'm I'm doing this. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my kind of sort of view. This is the media section at the TD Garden. So I'm up on one of the the, the counters here where we work, and so you can I'll move out of the way so you can see it's kind of a corner view from the uh, the Celtics bench is down this way to my left to the left here. And so I get to see the shot. So I I saw the shot from that opposite corner over there. It's coming right at me. That thing was a curveball. That thing did not go straight. And I don't think I've ever seen other than outside playing outside and the wind took it. That I swear that ball kind of went this way and whoop turned. And he missed that shot by a mile. It was like a foot wide. And he said after the game, when I shoot, I'm shooting with a lot of pain. Okay. What the hell is he doing in the game then? What was that? Why was he in the game if he's shooting with pain and and that hindered his shot? And he played for seven minutes and was a minus, what I say, 15 in a very short amount of time. That right there, you could just say, don't play Malcolm Brogdon, find another way, and maybe you're not minus 15 in that stretch, and maybe things change. Hard to say. I don't know what would have changed, but that stretch killed him. He was horrible. Between Brogdon and Jalen Brown, six men of the year, second team All-NBA, those guys couldn't get the job done. You're just not going to win those games. You're just not going to win these games. And I said it yesterday in the podcast. I, said, I just I backs against the wall. I thought this was going to be another adversity fueled win. I really thought that they were going to come out and ride this crowd and hit a few shots early instead of nine to four. I I that easily could have been. There were two or three three pointers that they could have made, so that could have been fifteen to four very easily, and that changes the entire tenor of the game. Well, they didn't. Malcolm Brogdon played. He didn't play well. Jalen Brown didn't play well. Game is over. It's done. I'm not going to dwell on the game because who cares about the breakdown of the game anymore? I think the Celtics are going to regret this missed opportunity. I'll talk about that in just a second. First, I want to thank everybody for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Check out the other podcasts on the network, uh, Lockdown Nuggets, Lockdown Heat, if you want to keep up with the finals. I will be back. Now I'm going to switch into off-season mode, and I will be back with podcasts kind of breaking down the the regular season here, the postseason. It's time to take stock of what what does Boston have. That's going to be what fuels the podcast moving forward. I think this this Celtics team is going to look back on this. Now, afterwards, after the game, they were were obviously upset, but it wasn't like the finals last year where I saw everybody and I was like, everybody was on the verge of tears. This one was very kind of like matter-of-fact and I don't want to. I don't want to put it. Put this feeling, my feeling, on the team. But like some of these guys, it was so matter of fact that I think. I think losing, they were just like, yeah, you know what? It is what it is. This this is where we gone. This is our season. It, you know, we wanted to win. We didn't win. Mm, all right. See you next season. I kind of feel like that was the attitude from some of these guys. Like, not that they. Uh, didn't care. They cared. They obviously cared. Uh, I, I just feel like the end of the season was not exactly like unwelcome to some of these guys. I think, I think they would have preferred to, to have won. I think they would have preferred to, to win a championship because everybody wants to win a championship, but this season being over, it feels like some of these guys are like, you know what? Damn. Oh, well, See ya. 
kind of a weird ending to me. I'm going to get somebody else on the podcast tomorrow to kind of see what they think about that. Because I kind of felt, I kind of felt like there was a weird ending. And as I was saying, I interrupted myself. I feel like they're going to regret this. I feel like they're going to regret this season. However, this season went for them. There were a couple of comments. Al made the comment. I think maybe Tatum or Brown made the comment alluding to, Hey, we've been through a lot in that, in that locker room. We've been through ups and downs in that locker room. And it just felt like there's more to this story. The way they were talking, it feels like there's more to this story. It wasn't just Joe Missoula coming in and, um, you know, Ime Adoka going out. It feels like there's more to what's been going on in the locker room over the course of the year. And they stayed together and everything's, you know, they they came back from 3-0 and forced the game seven. And unfortunately, this was not the team to break that. It's 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 0 and 151 now. But and and by the way, side note, this is why it's 0 and 151, because the Celtics by by messing around and blowing game two left themselves susceptible to a sprained ankle. This is why you close out a series when you can. This is why you don't mess around and 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 blow these games. This is why when you have winnable games, winnable opportunities, you win them. So this is not the regret that I'm talking about, but this should be some regret from the Celtics. They should look back on that and say, we missed these opportunities. Because when you miss those opportunities to close out a series or win games in a series, this is what happens. Tatum rolls his ankle and is not himself, and Miami wins at home. That is why you cl- you you got to handle your business. Anyway, I even forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Celtics, um, whatever they had, whatever else they had going on, I don't know. And they overcame a lot. But they couldn't, they couldn't quite get to this final goal. And, and the reason why I feel like they're going to regret this, like I was saying before, first of all, the Denver Nuggets are a great team. I think that, that would have been a hell of a series. I just think Boston matches up very, very well against Denver. I feel like the Celtics could have beaten Denver in a seven-game series. Uh, I don't know if they would have had enough in the tank. This series obviously took a lot out of them, so maybe they wouldn't have had enough to to win the series, and maybe it would have gone seven because they just, being in the altitude, it would have been very, very difficult for them to do it. But regardless, I still feel like if the Celtics had won, they could beat Denver. Now, I think Miami is the opposite of that. I think Denver has the matchups against Miami, and I think Denver is going to win that series pretty easily. And they're going to do what the Celtics should have done. There's an opportunity in front of them, they saw it, they took it, and they are going to make the most of it. It's my opinion. They had the, the Lakers in front of them, and they just dispatched them. They just dismantled them. You got to take advantage of the opportunities in front of you. Why? The Celtics are now, and I, I we're just starting to get into the collective bargaining agreement stuff. The, the details are starting to kind of float out there, and... The more details I see, the worse it looks for the Celtics. And this is such horrible timing for Boston. This is why we're going to look back on this and say, oh, God, they should really regret this missed opportunity. Because Boston, we know ownership here doesn't have the same uh, capacity for spending as the, the Clippers or the Warriors right? The Warriors print money. The Clippers that, you know, Balmer's mega, mega, mega rich, multi-billionaire. All right. Celtics owners are super rich, but they don't own this building. They rent it. They don't have the same kind of money-making potential as some of these other teams. And so they have to bide their time. Last year, they dipped under the tax because they wanted to make sure that they can spend into it this year. They addressed some needs. They brought in Malcolm Brogdon, who makes $21 million or so. They brought in guys. 
without really worrying about how much money they were going to spend. They're going to give Jalen Brown the Supermax extension. They're going to, I think they're going to at least offer it to him and see what he does. That that shouldn't be an issue. Guys, they're, they're ready to spend. I don't know what Grant Williams is going to make, but the Celtics have been ready to spend. They took, they, they were biding their time. They got to a point last year. They lost in the finals. They said, okay, we're going to address that now. Let's spend money. Now the Celtics are in spend money mode. Okay, new collective bargaining agreement. Probably sat there and said, how much different can this be, really? Well, turns out that the rest of the league didn't like what the Golden State Warriors did, and they don't like what the Clippers are doing. So they decided, hey, we're going to punish these super mega, mega high spenders. And the Celtics kind of by sheer luck and timing kind of walked into the mega high spender room and <laughs> they walked in as the cops were there, you know, like they opened the door like, okay, we're here to spend a bunch of money. And the cops were like, uh, we're here to arrest all the people who are spending all this money. The, this new collective bargaining agreement meant to punish the warriors and the Clippers is going to punish Boston almost immediately and force them into some decisions. Now, I have to take a closer look, for sure. My initial read is the Celtics are going to have to make some personnel decisions to maintain some flexibility during the season if they want to add to the team. Or they can just say, you know what? We are going to spend into this second apron, whatever, and we're going to bring back everybody. And this is going to be a straight up, completely the same run it back team. And I know right now in the aftermath of everything, you're sitting there going like, what, really? We're going to have to watch this team again? I feel like this is the situation that they're in. They are going to have to either run it completely back the exact same way with no opportunity to change mid-season or they're going to have to start moving some salary because there's going to be a need to stay below that apron, that second apron, so they can add to the team at the trade deadline without all of these very, very punitive restrictions. I feel like we're going to look back on this and say, wow, the Celtics had an opportunity to win a championship. And for some reason, they, they very kind of almost casually let it slip through their fingers. And next season's going to be much, much harder than we realize because of this. And we're going to say, oh, man, that 2023 team, that team should have won a championship and didn't. And now it's a fight. I'll I'll look I'll look deeper into this. We'll dive deeper into this as the, the offseason now progresses. Um, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be tough. This is gonna be an incredibly important offseason. This offseason is gonna say a lot about this team's future. Next year's team has to win a championship, right? Like their their window is open, but it doesn't stay open very long. It closes much faster than you think. We're going to process this. The Celtics lost. Miami Heat are going to the finals. An eighth seed. It's an amazing story. Um, congrats to them. Probably should have said this at the beginning of the podcast, but I don't want to take away from everything that they did. Uh, this is obviously very Celtic-centric, very Celtics-focused. But I let let me just end the podcast by saying Miami Heat absolutely deserved to win this. They played harder than Boston for most of this series. Caleb Martin got screwed out of the conference finals MVP. I have no idea how Jimmy Butler got that that award. Caleb Martin 
crushed the Celtics in this series. Caleb Martin was the absolute best player on the floor for most of this series. The fact that people voted for Jimmy Butler is outrageous, outrageous to me. He had multiple games where he was barely there. He had a couple of good games, and he had one really good game at the beginning of the series. Caleb Martin has been consistently good. He crushed Boston the whole way. He was amazing in this series. He won this series for the Heat. If the Heat don't shoot the lights out, him and Gabe Vincent, especially, throw some Duncan Robinson in there. Oh, my God, Duncan Robinson backdoor cuts are going to haunt my dreams how do you let that guy backdoor cut you so much in this series? They follow Jimmy Butler, and he's the leader, and, and whatever. They gave him this thing probably as some sort of lifetime achievement award. I think that was crap. But they they deserve it. They played better. They played harder. I don't think they're going to win the finals, but, you know, congratulations, congratulations to Jimmy Butler for getting there. And who knows? I've underestimated the Heat before. If Jimmy Butler wins a championship, I mean, God, that'd be that'd be something. <laughs> That'll be something. But I think Jokic is going to do it. Uh, but congrats to the Heat. They earned the win. They won three times in Boston. I, I I'll save that. I'll save that because that that that's still an ongoing story. I, I just don't understand how you, a Celtics team can allow three wins on their own floor in a series. Much more, much more, much more coming up all week long, all off season long. Remember now, this is a five day a week podcast. It remains a five day a week podcast. So I'm not going to go anywhere. Five days a week in June, five days a week in July. Maybe in August and September, we'll, we'll dial it back a little bit, but you're still getting five days a week from me. More podcasting about the Celtics than you're going to find anywhere. So subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Watch a show on YouTube. Hop into the comment section. Fight with these Miami Heat fans or whatever, or just leave a comment and let me know what you think about the show, about the Celtics, whatever. Uh, and I would love it if you shared the podcast, tell your friends, tell everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.